coming in here. Um, we've got a packed house, as you can see. <laughs> um, my name is Ben Schmidt, and um, I'm going to talk to you about web conferencing. Web conferencing for me is still a fairly new phenomenon, but I think it is for everybody. Um, I got involved about two and a half years ago with a company. And prior to that, I was a reporter. I was a journalist for 18 years. I worked at various newspapers all around the country. I grew up in Pittsburgh, and um, I decided I wanted to move home. I had been gone for 22 years. Um, I was living up in Detroit, and the um, newspaper industry was having its share of struggles. So I decided that um, I wanted to try to move home and find a different job and do something different. And somehow, I got sucked into this um, web conferencing industry, which is, um, it's fascinating. It's fascinating, it can be frustrating, it can be groundbreaking, and I think it still has a ways to go. But what I didn't know when I uh, took the job, and, and where I work is I work in a, a company in Monroe, it's called Chorus Call. And what they do is, out the way we're being live streamed right now, they provide services like that. They sell services, they sell web, video, and audio conferencing. Um, I got hired to work for a new product, which is a free product, it's a web-based product. It's called, and this is, I'm gonna cover everything, I'm not gonna do a sales pitch here. Um, but ours is called Concerto, play on words, concerto. It's, uh, it's made here locally, and it's our free product. And it is, you, you talked about um, social, it is social in a way, uh, but it's not as social as a Facebook or even Twitter. Um, and what it does is, you can go onto the site, you can register, you can have web conferences where you publish a webcam with up to as many as, well really 500 people on the audio line. For, with web cameras, you can have as many as 12. Uh, so when I was being told about this job, I was interviewing, I was, I was thinking, wow, is, um, are there other sites out there like this? And um, I didn't really think there were that many. I heard, obviously I heard of Skype. Uh, I think that was about it. So it sounded very groundbreaking. And it is. And I, I really enjoy doing it. I'm, I'm happy to talk to you about it. But now I'm going to show you what I found out um, maybe two days into my new job. So Which here, was when? I started, good question, I started in June 2010. Okay. So here's our site, okay? Here's another one called Huvu. Talkbox. GoToMeeting. Skype, of course. And the new one that's really uh, breaking ground and uh, attracting a lot of users, Google Hangout. And I'm going to ask you now, how many, of, how many of you have done a web conference in some sort of fashion? Which one have you done? Mainly the um, go to meeting. Go to meeting. So but you're... I don't like Skype. I keep sliding down my computer. And that's, I'm going to ask you a question, but I'm going to, I'm going to bring up a point about that. It slows down your computer. If you've done this, you've, everybody's had some sort of uh, headache because everybody's on different bandwidth. Everybody's in different locations. Maybe the wireless network isn't working as well. So, you know, I was at one of these where I was a participant, and somebody said something that really resonated with me. They said, you know, we can put a person on the moon, but we haven't yet perfected web conferencing. So, I think we will. Um, and, and I think that um, it's going to, you know, with each month, it's going to continue to grow and get better. But it's still um, a pretty new. Thing for people to use. So I'm assuming GoToMeeting used it for business. GoToMeeting I've used for business. I do about three to four webinars a month. Mm -hmm. And only once have I ever had a problem with that. It seemed to be a fluke. And I had four people on with me and three that were talking amongst themselves that were on the whole network. But other than that, I've never had a problem with it. So what do you like about it? Um, a lot of the people that I work with or contacting have no computer skills mm -hmm. 
and so they can get onto the phone even if they can't connect with the link and then even most of them can connect with the link um, they don't seem to get lost okay. um, getting lost is an interesting thing I mean I've had people be on a webinar and say my screen went blank and I'm like move your mouse and they're like oh you know so when you're dealing with that you have to uh, have ease of use and do you uh, actually publish a webcam when you use it no um, I let them each time is different mm -hmm. um, and we go where I mean I have my set five points and we take an hour and right. I, I'm dealing with authors okay. so what may work for your book may not work for her book and so it's very specific to whoever's on the conference and my guess is with GoToMeeting you have to pay for that yes and for you it's worth it yes and what is it uh, 30 bucks a month or something like that I was going to say 20 25 something like that um, and some other, people, <laughs> some other people have their hands up that have used it. Which one do you use? Um, I've used Skype. I've used FaceTime. FaceTime's um, one I missed. Yes. Yeah, I've used um, Google Hangout. Right. Um, and then uh, one that I don't like, it was a pretty elite paid for service that I'm not familiar with, right. um, or I don't remember. I used it once three years ago. Is there one you prefer? Um. Right now, uh, I want to like Google Hangout, but you have to have an account, or like I haven't like experimented with enough with like its versatility of like inviting anyone, you know, like tech people, like non-tech people. And are you using this for for business or for personal as well? Uh, both. So when you say the Google Hangout account, you mean you have to have you have to sign up with Gmail, mm -hmm. and that and that bothers you? Well, um, I don't. In thinking about who I want to use it with, I don't want to make it harder for people to do that like and I think these are um, these are both great points that um, everybody's experience in, in this space they're all different some of them you can just invite somebody and send them a link and they can just click there and actually when you do that's one thing I like about Google Hangout is when you do sign up you pretty much just click on the hangout and all of a sudden boom your webcam is published you can see people you can hear people and you're, you're there and, and I think that's what what people are looking for, for simplicity. And with some of these other ones, um, Google Hangout, which, you know, you were talking about how you might, some, you're running a webinar and somebody doesn't know where to do this or where to do that, you have to kind of direct them. Um, what we found with our website is you also have to register. And so we figured, okay, we'll go, we'll go register some people. How, how hard can it be? Well, people, if you, if you use Skype, people are very comfortable in the one they've tried. And, and they're intimidated by using a new one, um, let alone sign up for one. So if you sign up for a new one, you've got to put in some personal information, you're all of a sudden, you know, are you going to get spammed, things along those lines. So what we did when we launched this one, Concerto, is we started going to coffee shops. We started going to colleges, and we started talking to people on the street, uh, really grassroots. And initially, with our site, you could you could web chat through a web camera, but initially the audio line was only through a telephone uh, because it's such a secure, it's such a it's such a stable line. Whereas with a Skype, you know, you're going to use a web phone, and it's going to all be online. And so when you use the phone with Concert O you know you're gonna get quality and you're not gonna have some of the issues that we were speaking about. What's the downside of that? Imagine going to you know, a college campus and saying, hey, wanna to, want to check out this website? Well, here, here's what you do. You, know, you just publish your webcam and talk to people. How do I connect my audio? Well, you gotta you know, dial in some pin passcodes and pin phones. And we, we realized right away that um, college kids, and actually a lot of people, aren't gonna sit there and use a phone and use their computer. In the business world, sure, because you're at your desk probably, you're really there more to just to talk and, and you just want quality. But we took that, that feedback and we now made it that you can actually connect on a telephone or you can use a web phone, which is a la Skype or some of the other Google Hangout. So now you have the choice. So that was something 
that people people gave us feedback, and we said, all right, let's let's implement that. Other reasons you might want to use uh, do web conferencing. Um, besides being able to see and talk to people, people want to share their desktop, meaning that um, you want to show everybody what you have on your screen. If, if you're doing a webinar, if you're doing you know if you're talking about some sort of uh, business deal, uh, you might want to share documents. You might want to share photos. Um, go to meeting is something that will do that. Skype, I'm not. I've only used Skype for personal. I don't. I don't want to say it doesn't because maybe it does, but I don't think it does. Um, so those are some other things that we built on our website, um, where you can actually share your desktop, you can share your you can share photos, you can share videos, and um, you can still have a web conference at the same time. Um, other people who um, use some of these sites, how do you feel about publishing your webcam? Showing your face to others over online. You like it? Not so much. Why is it? I, I don't look as good as I think I do. <laughs> if you have, have you ever, so which sites do you use for web conferencing? I really haven't, that's why I'm here. You're giving me confidence right. to go and do this. All right. It's yes. Go ahead. It's very distracting because, like, if if you're not in a business environment, if the person that you're talking to has yep. kids or dog or whatever, and they're at home, they're coming in or out, yeah. and it's it's very distracting. It's the same as if they were in your home. <laughs> what are some of the pluses of doing face to face? Yeah, see their expression, see where they are. Uh, it's interesting, though. I mean. I think when I started in this just two years ago, they were just, I mean, I, I might be a little off on this, but it was still fairly new to have a laptop with right here with the webcam built in. Now I think you have to almost ask to not have it built in. And so we were running around, we were doing demos, and people were like, well, we don't have a webcam. So we were supplying webcams, and you remember how they were these, these yeah. big balls, and now they've already, you know, we've shrunk down. So we've, the technology is continuing to evolve and evolve. But I think the big question that I face and the whole industry faces is when is it going to just really go gangbusters? And I wrote down some statistics as I was doing a little research for this. Skype set a Skype set a new high last year for 45 million concurrent callers on their site. Only half of them published their webcam. So why is that? You know, I don't I don't know if I have the answer. I think we're up against a thing like this, where you can just text. And it's just so easy to just, you know, text somebody, have a conversation. Why do you really need to show your face? But at the same time, why not if you can? I'm sorry, earlier no. when you asked me that, I was thinking about publishing the webinar versus the, the camera. But it's the same thing. It's, it's very distracting for my authors when they can actually see me and see what's going on in the background, because they all just want to see your office. Yeah, it, there's that, absolutely. And I think there's also, um, if you have, let's say you have a web conference going and there's you know, six or seven people in there, and there's someone kind of leading it, and that person might be not really making eye contact with you, and then you look at all the other screens and everybody else is looking down or looking somewhere else. So as a host of a web conference, you really have to find a way to keep everybody engaged. If you call everybody by name, just kind of keep the thing flowing. Because if you don't, you're, it's just kind of, if you're going to go back and look at it and everybody's going to be looking down, the, uh, the host of it's looking somewhere else, because you know you have to look into the webcam, but at the same time you might be wanting to read something and share it out. But I think that's a challenge. Um, I have a friend who's the CFO of a company in Michigan, and he was telling me, like you, he uses GoToMeeting probably four times a week. And so I just sent him an email yesterday and asked him, well, what do you like about it, what don't you like about it? Here's some of the things he said to me. First of all, a web conference can never fit, replace face-to-face. -face. I think we know that. Um, he says, we utilize web conferences for lower end sales engagements. Um, maybe when we don't have the, the time or money to get on a plane. Um, he says, I don't use a webcam ever because it eliminates the ability to have a sidebar. So maybe you're in a room with a bunch of people and if you have a webcam on you, you can't really kind of say, well, Good idea, bad idea, so on and so on. Um, 
he said, you know, what else did he say? Um, he said, well, in, in his mind, I don't know if I actually agree with this. Web conferencing has its place, but I think the pendulum has swung back the other way. Uh, companies had been pulling back on travelers to save money, but I think it's, it's a more of a selective thing now. At least it is for his company. I don't know about that. I think the economy is still tight, and um, I think it's a way for people to connect, you know, all over the world. But I, I, again, I think the question is, you know, why hasn't it just gone gangbusters like Facebook? Yes? Have you noticed a trend in the past two years now that webcams are becoming more common in people's willingness to publish or no? You know, I think it depends on the, the session. Like the Google Hangout, for example, it's pretty much built for that. And so people are probably going to do a Google Hangout with their friends. Um, so yeah, I think in a setting like that, sure. I think Google Hangout is, what is it, a year old? Less than that. Yeah, I think that's really kind of raised the bar. But um, again, for business, like go to me, and I, I think a lot of times people don't really, in the business world, you, you conference call a lot. Well, and I think part of it is, is the way that it's marketed. It's marketed to be a call your friends. You know, I mean, a lot of it is, you know, the Google Hangout or whatever. It's a hangout. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, that's what they named it for. It's yeah. not some place where you go to have a serious discussion. Yes. Um, in, in, like, with the people that I'm working with, there's no way that I could provide the personalized service any, way, any other way, you know, right. because there's 7,000 of them and one of me. <laughs> right. Um, right. But this is something that I can do that with which you can't replace by, you know, the travel, but, um, so there's pros and cons to that, but I think part of their problem is the way that they market it. I think you're right. And, you know, I think, um, back to our website over here, one of the things we try, we try to do is market it for, um, for both. And I think that's great, but I think it, it can also pose the challenge. Um, I think because we're trying to just ensnare everybody. Yeah. Um, I think as the military comes back, I mean, they've learned how to use that type of technology when they're over there to call back home. I think as they come back and are more into the workplace, I think you'll see a little bit of a change there as they integrate back. Um, because they're used to making conference calls that way. Absolutely. Um, again, without uh, doing too much of a sales pitch, which I'm not, I think you should use any one of these sites or all of them. And I, I do for competition scene. Uh, one thing that we um, came, stumbled upon, well, really it was our CEO, CEO's idea. That, and I, I do know that the president did this with uh, something that was built, so I can't say we're the only one. We, we set up something that's called a town hall. So what you do is you get somebody to have a, a web conference on your site and you kind of publicize it as an event-driven thing. So we're in Pittsburgh, so where did we go? We went to the Steelers. We got Brett Kiesel, we got Antonio Brown. And what we did is, we publicized it, but so did they. And talk about social media, Antonio Brown has, and he's a younger guy, he has tons of followers. So he said on, on February, was the week before they lost to Denver, so February, whatever week that was. He went onto our site, tweeted about our link and invited people to come at 7 p.m. And what we did was publish his webcam like that. Actually, there he is. <laughs> you can play back some of the meetings. And uh, that was a good time. Um, he's again. People joined. I think we had about, uh, so he did it twice, yes. We had about 225 people join the first one. So obviously we can't support that many webcams at once. But there, everybody's going in to see him. So we configured that meeting that, that only he could publish his webcam. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is going in there and they just want to talk to him. What's another issue with that? Well, you can't have 225 people, and, and some of these people are huge fans. You can't have them all talking at once. So we created something, uh, a Q&A, and a hand raising feature. So what we did was Antonio Brown published, he connected his audio, everybody could hear him. He said, okay, hey, I'm, I'm here, I'm gonna talk to you for an hour. You know, we're getting ready for Denver, which that didn't work out too well. But um, there's a little hand that's in the top of their screen. Click on that hand, and, I'll, and he has a column that's Q&A. And basically, everybody who raised their hand 
one in the Q and A queue, and he would click on each person one by one. So if I clicked on you, you'd be unmuted. And what's your Ka first name? Kathleen. Kathleen. So, so you say, I'd say, I'm Antonio Brown or whoever. Hey, Kathleen, how are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And you and I are having a one-on-one. -on -one. Everybody else can hear it, but they can't interject until the host finishes with you and then goes on to the next person. So we've done this with politicians where, you know, maybe five people raise their, their hand the whole hour. Antonio Brown, he never got the wrong questions. Yeah. So it gave us an idea of what we could do with this and where this could go. We're like, wow, if we could get presidential candidates to do this. We tried. Um, <laughs> President Obama did his own. Yes. He, he actually built, he hired Adobe to build his own. And I think it, I read about it, you know, only a select number of people were invited and uh, he had some issues, but he still, I mean, think about how that can evolve. So we started hitting some other, we went to DC, we went to New Hampshire during the primary. We really wanted to get um, politicians on, we still do, and we will. What do you think some of the uh, drawbacks are for politicians? Lying. Is it, <laughs> lying? Lying, or, yeah, or drawback. Somebody who raises their hand and talk is gonna kind of direct, try to direct the conversation in a way they can, the politician doesn't want to. Know. Absolutely. So. We're not meeting with these politicians face to face. We're usually meeting with their hand. What's the first thing they say? Well, what if someone gets in there and heckles us? Well, yeah. you just click on the, the thumbs down button and they, they, um, they're they silenced. Doesn't matter. Yes? It's essentially talk radio. It's like talk radio. It is like talk radio, except with talk radio, I think they even have call screeners. So we, we were being asked, well, how do you screen the call? And we, we said, can. It's, it's a live thing. What if you're in a uh, uh, high school and you're doing a town hall? You can't, you know, now maybe there's plants in there, I don't know. But um, it'd, be, yeah. it'd be an interesting aspect if you were teaching an online class to be able to interact that way. Right. And that's another thing that I, I think that um, with these cyber schools, I think a lot of these websites are going to start. Um, jumping into that free. So the question is, do you have it for individuals or is it just for people that you are organizing? My site personally? Yeah, the town meeting. Who's it for? Town hall. As far as who can host it? Um, yeah. Really anybody. Um, we, the idea was to um, have it for politicians. And when we went out there, we found that there's a lot of hesitation. Um, so we went to Athens. But anybody could have a town hall. It's almost like it is a webinar. In a way. It's more of a um, moderated web conference. And how much does it cost to have a town hall? On our site, it's yeah. free. I mean, there's been on other sites. I mean, some of these sites are free. Skype is free. And I, I would tell you, if, if you're just getting in, you, into this, I would try Skype first. I mean, that's a free site. You know, Google Hangout is free. Um, Uvu, which I've never used, but I've heard just because it's such a weird name, is free. No, I want to try, try your site. Well, please try ours, too. <laughs> uh, but I think you should try them all. Yeah. Should you put ads on or what? For um, for our site? Yeah. We have not. No. What, what, what covers your costs and what do you do? Well, as I said at the, at the beginning, um, I work for a larger company. And... and um, I think it was you, Kathleen, who mentioned that you were, or maybe it was you, that you were on a site that was that was um, a larger company and it was kind of more high def and more. Mm -hmm. We kind of sell higher end versions of, of this stuff. This is just our test. Our, is this like your test market? I wouldn't say that because I don't think there's any plan to take it away, but it's just our way to jump into this space online. That's your company. We, we have we have other products that we sell, um, so. You know, we sell even just a conference call. So that's kind of how we're able to support this. But um, I think it's a great idea. Well, thank you. Well, obviously, as you see all these sites, I'll go through them again. A lot of people have thought that as well. Go to me, Skype, Google Hangout, Google, uh, Talkbox. Yeah, and there's more. There's, I didn't even list them all. There's so many. 
I, I mean, I think for you, you have to find out which one works for you the best. Uh, Skype is very good for one-to-one. -one. Skype is almost, well, it is. You're making a phone call. So if I'm going to Skype with you, I go to the site, I see whether you're up, whether you're online, and I will just call you with my webcam. And you'll, it'll actually bring over your phone or your um, tablet, and you'll answer it. We'll be able to see each other if we want to. We don't have to. So that's that's kind of how Skype is different than like our site or a go-to meeting where that is more of a scheduled meeting time where you just show up at this site at three o'clock and everybody's in there. Um, and that's something that just actually jarred by one issue that I haven't spoken about is um, right now I'm on a laptop. Now everybody wants to use, you know, tablets are, are huge. So you can use Skype on a tablet. So we have an iPad at home. My, my wife's, uh, my father-in-law is in New Hampshire. My wife can get on her iPad and Skype with, with him whenever she wants. Our site, and so, so you know this isn't a sales pitch, we don't have a um, mobile platform yet. You can't use it, you can only use it on a computer. Um, I believe, yeah, I know go to meeting that you can't use. And, and that's where this industry is just evolving, evolving, evolving. You've got to stay on top of it. FaceTime, Google Hangout, you can do it right here. There's a little camera right there. You can, you can do it from here. Yeah. You don't have to be on a computer. Now again, for business, it probably doesn't matter as much if you're in a, if you're in a corporate setting or in a, you know, at your workplace. Being on a computer is fine. Uh, but um, I think the companies that are going to survive are going to be the ones to figure out how to use the mobile and the tablets. I see two people in here right now on tablets. You know, that's the way to go. Uh, I love tablets. I was going to say, just, just because of what I do with the authors, we now do book tours with authors across the world. We'll, we'll set them up, you know, with a computer or whatever at a library or a bookstore or whatever. Whoever that's read the book can just go in and it's a live chat right then. Yep. And that's how they do book tours now, so they don't have to travel, which is pretty cool. Which is like a Google Hangout, yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, as I said at the beginning of this, I think the issues are, you know, and I gave the whole, the whole person on the moon analogy, um, bandwidth is still an issue. Uh, your wireless connection, where it is, which I guess goes hand in hand with bandwidth. And, and just other, you know, I, I do a, a Google Hangout with some friends every few weeks, and it, everybody's, you know, everybody's mic is set differently, so you really are in, in control of a lot of it. And it's still kind of, it's not just like picking up the phone and calling someone. It's everybody's voice is going to be loud. Some are too loud. Some are you can't hear them. And I think that can be a turnoff. That can be frustrating. And if you have one bad experience, that might be it for you using that site. Well, GoTo meetings doesn't have like the town hall. I don't want to say that for sure. I mean, because I'm not, I don't know if, whether they do. GoTo meeting is one though you do have to pay for. It. Right. And I think it is very reliable. I mean, Kathleen, you mentioned it. It's, it's yeah, pretty good. You said it's easy to use. Yes, and they don't have a town hall forum type thing, but you can put up to I think 500 or so people in there, and you have the chat feature so that if you do mute everybody. They can email or not email, but ask yeah. you questions. The problem that we have with that, when because I do carriage driving also, and they have been trying to do webinars that way, is that when there's so many of us from such diverse backgrounds and we can't talk, they get bombarded with questions, and by the time they get to the answer, we it's been too long. So, which is why I kind of like if you put your hand up, that might. Better. Let's try that. Do the other Let me person... show you. Here's the overview video of GoToMeeting, and it's and that's another okay. thing that it's it's great. Let's see how this people again. We'll test the bandwidth. Can I can I ask if absolutely that when it's not your turn and you don't have your hand up, can you see when your hand's going to be up, or can you, can you no. get frustrated and hang up? No, I mean yeah, just that's a great question. You don't. At least on our side. Okay. Yes. Well, what you just said, uh, you said the politicians are a little reluctant to use your town hall. It might be if, if Sorry. they had to post their question instead of just putting up their hand, then the politicians can see whether or not they want to answer it. 
And that is one way to get around that. Uh, there, we do have a text chat window, but I think what we um, underestimated, and sorry if my bosses are watching this, is we just didn't think there'd be that much of a fear of immediacy. But there is, at least in that. You realize how much those things are uh, kind of vetted, if you will. So here, I'll play this video. I, don't, I won't play the whole thing, but you'll get the idea. Because what I like about this video for GoToMeeting is it shows people joining from tablets, from phones, from their computers. Uh, what did I do? <laughs> Bandwidth. Oh, you crashed it. Try it again. I won't. Uh... Okay, that's good enough. You get the idea, right? Can you see that? Yeah. So you, so you saw the businessman. You see. Someone's using a, a mobile phone. If you've never used GoToMeeting before and you're going to use it for the first time and you want to be at a meeting, start five minutes early because it does take a few minutes to So you get the idea. I mean, what I really liked about that video is um, just that they were all using different devices. And, and I didn't hear what you were saying about the, was it about how long it takes to get Well, it? if you've never used it before, start five minutes early. Okay. You know, it what does happens? take a few minutes to just make everything work. After that, like if I, if I have a webinar at three o'clock, I can start at 2.58 and be up and running. That first time, it does take a few minutes. The other thing that it doesn't talk about here is that if, like, if I'm doing a group and ten of the nine of those people are have computers and they're at their computer, but you're the tenth one and you're in the car but you want to join, you can be on your phone, call it into the and not be connected, you know, not have your computer screen there, and just hear it, which is nice. Um, it, you don't have to have a smartphone, I guess. You can have a landline, right. that type of thing. That's what I mean. So you can kind of get in anyway. Yes. Yeah, sometimes people don't, you know, they're not there yet. You know, another thing that I think that's going to develop in this field is uh, with the news media. I think that um, right now you can go to, you know, you can go to a news website, you know, be it the Post Gazette or, or USA Today or the New York Times, and sometimes the writers will have chats. You know, it's like at two o'clock, they'll chat about a uh, sports team or a political issue or a civic issue, and uh, people just will type to them. Well, imagine if uh, that writer says, "I'll do a Google Hangout, and maybe some already have that I don't know, or I'll do a um, go to meeting, or I'll do you know concert home, and you can actually see me and interact with me and talk to me about the news of the day, or the news of the week, or the news of the year." Uh, I think that. Uh, that the Weather Channel that does that. Yeah, I think that's going to continue to, to grow. I mean, sports writers, I can see that's a natural fit. Um, we actually tried one with um, an online news product. And uh, it was somebody in Detroit, where I, which is where I used to work. And they were talking about um, a reporter was, was going to ride the bus for a week and not drive a car and then write about it. So he went on there and shared his experiences. And I think we had maybe 15 people. Well, I was going to ask how, when you are doing these, how do you find, what do you find is the best method to making sure that people come? I'll go back to Antonio Brown. You got to go to when he, Well, when he tweeted okay. it, he, he, put a, he put out his tweet at like 3 o'clock and said, at 7 p.m. we're going to be on this website. But we track our numbers. We yeah. saw 300 people, like, we were like, wow. You know, so you need, that's why you need someone who's maybe prominent. Because, and he was active, he's obviously very active with social media. Kiesel was great, 
but I think we had 70 people, which is fine. Yeah. But he also used social media. He's a little older, maybe. He's not in that, you know, he's kind of toward the end of his career. Antonio Brown's brand new. He's kind of, you know, younger, and uh, he's, he's very active on those sites. Um, and it's amazing that, as I uh, delved into that world, how many of them don't even do their own tweets? They, oh, uh, yeah, they have people who are hired to do that. Yeah. So I do that. So, it's yeah. a good thing. <laughs> well, we, we hear a lot about uh, uh, the other way it works, too. Uh, I remember, not to stray too much, when I was a reporter in Detroit, and this was, I guess, three years ago, and there was a um, politician on trial for um, bribery and all kinds of things. He started tweeting about his trial. And I remember we're having these meetings in the newsroom like, can we quote them? Are we allowed to quote them? And now it's like, it's second nature. If someone's tweeting it, you can watch the news and see the tweet up on the screen or on ESPN. Well, the, the gentleman took the, uh, was down here with the guns. Was what Absolutely, yeah. yes. He was on Facebook. That was, that was the story. Yeah. Whether or not to shut him down. So, and that, again, um, bringing you back to the original question of how do you let people know? That's a lot of what we hear from politicians, too. Okay, well, maybe we'll try this. How are we going to let people know? I mean, we have our avenues, which we have a Facebook page, we have a Twitter page, but uh, we're not going to have, you know, the same amount of followers as someone who's very prominent. Yeah. So that is, I mean, it still is a challenge. I mean, obviously, if the president or um, is going to have a town hall, they're going to get the word out. It's not going to be a problem. But it's also good when somebody like that does it, because then people are like, Oh, social media at work. You know, I mean, like, it can do something. It can give me access to somebody like that. that yes. I would not have any other way. And that's my hope for this field. I think that that's how we're going to continue to grow it. I think if you're going to use it for personal reasons, you know, try them all out. Try Skype. Try, try the ones that you find that are the easiest to use. Um, for me, I would say Skype is probably the easiest. Well, Google Hangouts, right? They're probably one A, one B. Um, but if you need it for business, maybe WebEx or go to me. Try our site as well. And uh, get, send us feedback. There's a little email where you can uh, tell us what you like and what you don't like. And we take it to heart. Um, other questions? Do you, do you find that Skype slows your computer down? I've had it on two, and it seems to. I haven't had that experience, but I've, it seems like wherever you are, uh, whatever your computer you're using, you can have whatever browser. Yeah. Some work better on Google Chrome, some work better on Firefox. So there's still so many variables that need to be ironed out. Yeah, I just kind of was wondering because I'm like, everybody uses everybody uses it, but it, like for me, it seems to like just having it on there because it wants to run in the background. So this is at your house? Both that work in at my house. I ended up taking it off both, and I, I'm like, hey, is it me? <laughs> you know what? You just that's one thing I glossed over also. She, she mentioned I ended up taking it off both of my computers. Some of these programs you have to download, like a Skype. Some of them are web-based, like a, um, a Google Hangout. You don't have to download any. Concert, oh, you don't have to download any. I mean, some people don't like downloading things onto their computer. Um, so I mean, there's so many directions um, that this business can go. And I think it will continue to grow, but I think in some ways, People are going to find the ones that they like, and they're going to stick with that. You know, um, you know Google. I mean, Google Hangout is doing well, but Google Plus against Facebook. I don't know if that's if that's really going to make a dent. I'm not an expert in that. But I think that my my parting words were just don't be afraid to try it, persevere, and um, try to stay on top of the uh, new technologies. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. I hope that helped you. Yeah, you did. You did. Get me uh, confidence to go out there.